Hello, and welcome back to Overshadow Wanted. This is part two of our Shadowrun one-shot, and I'm very excited to continue to play and see what these crazy characters decide to do, especially after some of the stuff they've uh, learned the last episode or two. Before we get started, though, I would just like to invite everybody to come join us on the Cast Junkie server, because we love talking about these shows, we love talking to our fans, and we love just kind of sharing theories, which is a great spot to do that. It's the easiest way to talk to us. Also, uh, don't forget to go check out Top of the Round, which is the show of Nikki, our guest. Say hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Yeah, I found, yeah, yeah, she did it. Oh, she did it. Yeah. <laughs> I found a way to weave that in there. Oh, but yeah, we love Nikki. We love your show and we love playing with you. And I'm excited to, uh, to maybe kill your character. We'll see. Well, thanks so much. I'm honored to be here and potentially be slain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. We'll see. Out I mean, it's context, not it's not me hilarious. that does the killing. It's my characters. So uh -huh. you know, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. You just tell yourself that so you can sleep better at night. And I already sleep really good. So he does. Yeah. It's infuriating. <laughs> that must be nice. Yeah. I wish. I think that is enough for now, though. I will just do a very brief reminder for everybody of what's happened so far. These these guys and gals, they escaped from Kestrel Industries where they learned about Project Alpha, a secret project to kind of make a, a, a bio-research project gone wrong that um, basically has these super creatures that they are trying to prevent from getting on the market to kind of change the security uh, structure here in Seattle. That's kind of what Kestrel is trying to do. So they escaped. They went into this place called the Warrens beneath the streets of Seattle. They uh, kind of came up with some ideas, uh, started pursuing some of them, but it didn't necessarily pan out. Uh, they had uh, Arrow, uh, Nikki's character, had a rapper contact, a black market rapper contact who failed Sucked. on her. Yeah, he didn't get any good information. <laughs> He failed um, me. So now you guys, uh, you guys saved me, Kyle Kuznetsky, who's kind of like the scientist behind this project, uh, who was trying to escape. You helped him get away and his family, and you are now trying to bring him and his family to his contact to try and start a new life. And from there, you're not really sure. You're probably going to go try and get some more of these uh, Project Alpha specimens that you found that you think you can control and kind of turn against their creator, which is... Uh, Galen Davon, which is the leader of Kestrel Industries and the father of one of your players, Susanna's character. So yeah, that's kind of a not brief <laughs> intro, but uh, <laughs> we're going to go right back into it. So you guys are kind of wrapping up, you're kind of breaking camp uh, down in the Warrens. You had parked uh, Vanessa, um, Lucian Silva's car. Who is now car. Pizza Lisa. Yeah. I did not agree <laughs> to that name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, too bad. It's too bad. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you guys are kind of breaking camp in this like section of the Warrens that you're in. You're in an abandoned bank. Uh, Mikhail has said that he has his contact outside of town that he would like uh, to be dropped off at. So uh, I assume that's what y'all are doing, right? Let's get in the car and go. Yes. Did I do my? Did I do my like sleep thing? Did I, did I, do, I think I did my sleep roll, didn't I? Sleep thing. Yeah, you did. Okay, that was cool. an earlier episode. I'm pretty sure you passed it. Okay. Because you slept at one point. I did. So, uh, yeah, you're good. Um, I do still have it marked down that you have only five resonance right now instead of six. So it's going to affect... You have to roll one less die for anything that you would normally roll with resonance. Yeah. And why is that? Because I of... took part of your essence. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and how long is that going to last? 24 hours from when it happened. Okay, so it'll so be a yeah. while. Roughly uh, tomorrow night or today night. Today night. <laughs> Day and night. Whatever the next night time is, basically. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys all pile into Vanessa, and Lucian drives you to an exit from the Warrens, bringing you back up to the city streets. Um, I'm just going to kind of narrate you out here. You you decide to find kind of a um, an entrance that's on the edge of town, kind of away from the downtown area in the kind of the more rundown part of the city. Um, so you're relatively confident that you can kind of avoid detection, but you, uh, you know that you can't just rely on that. So are you guys doing anything special to go undetected? 
in this van that's plastered across news screens. It looks like well, a pizza a completely delivery different car. It's a pizza delivery Oh, that's it right. I totally like changed that. the appearance. Where is pizza pizza? Yeah, no, I, I heard it and then like just <laughs> went in one ear and out the other, huh? Just went in one, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay. It does not look the same. Yeah. I forgot that you Lucian did, what was that, physical was mask? was the only one that <laughs> failed the check. So of our group, it does He's look the only like one. the van, yeah, to Yeah, it does look like the Andrew's just over there like, well, they're going to die. most people, it looks like Pizza Lisa, the pizza van. Yep, it looks like Pizza yes. Lisa, the the pizza van, and you're relatively confident that it's good enough that uh, people are gonna buy it. Yeah, I think as we I go along, so. like Fluke <laughs> is probably trying to like monitor like chatter, you know, just okay. to make sure that nothing is wanting to bother us. Okay. Um. Well, go ahead. And uh, what what kind of skills do you have? Just because I don't have any of my cheats up because my computer is still reloading. <laughs> I'll let you know. Does Pizza Lisa come with an Argyle? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Actually, I think actually Fluke Fluke is the Argyle of of this um, oh God. of it's, this whole scenario. No, really no. Except Flute's <laughs> not know. chill enough to be Argyle. Well, yeah, yes, but he's the closest true. thing to an Argyle we've got. <laughs> in t in one respect entirely, and that is his level of sobriety in any. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> in any any moment. I don't know which of my like complex forms would be like useful for that. Okay. But um let's see here. Go ahead and roll me. I'm just gonna pull up your sheet now that I I could just back. do like a like a software or electronics roll. Yeah, just go ahead and make me a uh, software plus um I think logic is normally the stat that rolls with that, right? Yeah. Roll me a uh software plus logic. Uh, I got three hits. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So you were specifically just trying to see if there's any chatter about like the whereabouts of your group, right? On the news, or are you trying to like, check maybe police scanners and stuff too? Yeah, that's that the kind of, kind of, of thing. Yeah. I'm just like keeping an ear out for any chatter that may or may not be mentioning us, or just if anyone's suspicious of the pizza van. I would also like to tune into that frequency if possible. Uh, that is good enough. You are kind of listening on like kind of a broad range of different uh, streams, I guess. You know, you're listening to some news, you're listening to, to some police scanners, and you're not picking up any concrete evidence that they are on you guys. You're kind of cool. hearing them say mostly that, hey, we lost these people. Be on the lookout because... They have been, you know, they've gone to ground and we do not know where they are at. They're highly dangerous, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. okay, uh, cool. but, you, but they are not, you know, saying anything about getting a report that you're in this area. So pizza solves everything. Yes. I think Fluke is probably wanting pizza right now because you're in, a, in what looks like a pizza delivery van and there is no pizza to be had. It's very sad. That is very sad. So I think Fluke is just kind of like in the matrix, like hanging out. Like sitting on the floor with his eyes closed, like leaning back against the van. What does your uh, what does your avatar look like again? My avatar? Yeah. In the Matrix? Yeah. You wrote it down. I did? Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> I probably did. A very GM. I don't know where that today. is. <laughs> notes. No rolls. No. I, I have know. I have notes on your character. Hold on a you second. You do? Yeah. Well, why don't you tell me what it is? Because I don't have it. Written I'll down tell you about your own character because you did a bad job. No, your own you stuff. were the one that put all my stuff over into this new sixth world edition, and you didn't write it down. Oh, actually, this is just. Uh, I don't. I, maybe I don't have uh, descriptions of your characters. Never mind. Ha! Suck it. <laughs> Don't it? Don't say anything. I mean, you can still don't. check the old uh, roll twenty. Yeah, I could, but I don't want to. You don't want to. I don't. Well then. Well, anyways, you're, you're you can change it if you want. I guess it would. You can change I can it whenever change you it want. Change it every time if yeah, I want exactly, to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what do you yeah. want to look like right now? I think since Fluke is like hiding, you know, I actually do have a thing called mirrored persona, which lets me hide who I am inside the matrix. Um, I can create I can create proxy personas that look and act like me, so I can look however I want, kind of. Yeah. But. I think in this case, since Fluke is like trying to hide, he's like running around in like a, um, like an inflatable pizza outfit. <laughs> what? He's like a mascot for a pizza. He looks oh, like a pizza slice. <laughs> he's just running around in a pizzeria outfit. That's funny. Because I think he's bored and thinking about pizza. Do you have one of those signs too? You're like flipping around. Yeah, something like that. Uh. One of those like sandwich boards. Okay. He's just a pizza mascot. 
what is everybody else doing while you are traveling to this destination? You've been given a address. Uh, Mikhail, you know, would have contacted his, uh, his person via a comm link and been given an address. So you know where you're going. What else is everyone doing on the way? Lucian is looking around very nervously at this this interior because since he failed the uh, since he failed the role, he sees this as a pizza van, but everybody else sees it as it is, and so no, everyone else sees it as a pizza van. You everyone see else it as sees Vanessa. it as a pizza. Van. Okay, was it yeah. was it backwards? Okay, I think that's what it yeah, is. That's yeah, that's why it was funny, is because you were the only one that saw it as a pizza like delivery car, not even like a van, but a car. Right. Oh, is right. that the what rest it is? of us can? Yeah, the rest of us can still see Vanessa. Oh, okay. I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> So to him, we're all crammed into a car. That's what I. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's <laughs> what I thought. So, so okay. he's um, so he's looking around kind of nervously because he, you know, yeah. You, you've ass- everyone has assured him that this is the the vehicle, and he believes it. But he's he's seeing all this weirdness, and I think he um he might actually put a call out to one of his contacts who actually failed him the first time around. He needed information. He sent this guy in to find it and uh, he came up with nothing. And my character was fairly, fairly disappointed in him. And said, and basically, if I recall correctly, he said, you know, do me better next time. You know, I trust mm-hmm. you to, to dig stuff for me. And he wants to send this out because he's, he's wanting... In any case, they need more information about about uh, Devon, his you know his routines, where he'll be, when he'll be there, all that all that sort of stuff. So, I think he's going to put out a uh, encrypted like a million times message to this contact of his to see if uh, if he might be able to send him on a little errand of his own. <laughs> Okay, so specifically then the information that you're looking for is uh, Galen Davon's routine. Yes. What are like does he have any any anything as far as schedules or timing or, you know, anything we could possibly count on to be like, okay, at this time on these dates he's here, 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 or not. Um, so who is your contact that you are contacting? I believe this is the rat again, right? This is your kind yes. of code name for uh, he's them. um he's sort of the low level pencil pusher in um in one of the corporations. I think he actually worked for did I did we say what organization he worked for? I thought he worked for the I don't remember if we said that he worked at Kestrel specifically or if he was just a more generic like corporate info broker. I think he was just Yeah, a I think he was just corporate, corporate info. Corporate info broker. But yeah, so then he would uh he would be trying to find I, I would basically tell him, you know, or he, you want to, yeah, I'll, um, he types out this uh, message and he just says, need information regarding Galen, Davon, routines, regular contacts, etc. And then uh, he ends it, don't disappoint me this time. Uh, you see him like typing, you see the little like kind of three dots uh, equivalent and uh, he just comes up and just says um you're uh you're not trying to 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 hide everyone's looking for you and he he responds we'll set a location and time for meeting not in public eye and you get another text back that just says um i'll see what i can find and i'll uh i'll send you a place to meet you got any preference on what part of the city we meet in I mean, I, I think he would be thinking he would be thinking the Warrens just like, actually no, not there because that's where they've been hiding. And if he does turn over, then that's horrible for us because he knows where we are. Um, Maybe you should ask for a suggestion. And uh, <laughs> yeah, well, he's um, well, he's actually he's driving, but yeah, he's still he's still conscious. He's texting and driving. Well, I mean, he's a, <gasps> I would like he's to got think a that calm he, link. Hey, yeah. being a rigger, he can just oh. do these things, remember? Uh, okay, he can control multiple okay. drones at once, so. Yeah, and he just, uh, he turns to the others and he says, I've decided I'm going to give my one woefully inadequate contact a second chance, and he might be able to find us some information on... He looks at, uh, he looks at, uh, Fluke. Daddy dearest, and, uh... Fluke holds up a middle finger. <laughs> I just need to tell him where to be because obviously, you know, cannot go out for a midday coffee at a time like this. 
Maybe it's best if we uh, don't meet in person right now. Entirely that possible. Seems like a terrible idea. I'll set a drop-off point for whatever information he can find. Writes it down, prints whatever it is, drops it somewhere, I'll pick it up. I could send a courier sprite to just go get it in the Matrix. He looks at him and he's... He, w- he, would, have, he would have known this, right? About Fluke? I don't do know. This. I don't think Fluke's talked a ton about his sprites. Okay. We know that you do stuff in the Matrix, but not exactly what you do. He hasn't really talked about all of his little sprites and stuff, but... So that he hears this and, and his eyes get a little bit big and he's... Really quick, you would know that the term sprite is a technomancer thing. Like, yeah. you know that most people don't have those. Yeah, yeah, but I just, it's just the fact that he didn't, he didn't know this about, um, about Fluke himself, and so he looks at him kind of grudgingly with a little bit more of a, not respect, but more like, you know, oh look, surprise, surprise. And he's like, yes, actually, I suppose, um, if that is, uh, that is possible, that would certainly be more, um, be better in our current situation rather than showing up in person or even a drop off. So, all right, I'll, um, I'll explain to him where to leave it, and, uh, Send one of your um, errand bots, I suppose. Errand bots. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send Owl. He's not a. I mean, he's not a technomancer. He doesn't understand all the, that whole side of things, so he calls it whatever he can think of. Well, the folks seems unoffended. <laughs> but if it's in the but if it's in the matrix, like, then it's it's just going to be hidden in some online cache somewhere, right? Yeah, but the matrix is like a a world. Like you can tell him, hey, leave it in yeah. this specific garbage bin in the matrix. You know, like. All right. So Fluke can like literally like just say like, okay, go get it. That's the most secure way we have right now that's, yeah. that won't expose us. <laughs> yeah. And the less like anyone has to like directly interact with us, the better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I he, feel like uh, if we directly interact with anyone else, they're going to die. <laughs> we are now the introvert club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then um, he, he looks at him and he, kind of, he just says, well, um, you would actually know more about this side of things than me. Um, I, I just, I would need a location um, uh, f- for this. Anything in mind? Fluke smiles and writes, yeah, how about the pink pickle? Yes, I knew you were going to say just that. Have him put it in a, <laughs> just have him put it in one of the toilets in the pink pickle. You see Arrow just lean over and just face palm epically. I think <laughs> Fluke, you can see like Fluke open up his eyes and kind of sit up a little bit like he's pulled himself out of the Matrix. And he kind of looks around and sees Arrow face palming and says, "What? Who's gonna think to go check a brothel?" <laughs> Zara smirks. But you. this is, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm just exactly. wanting. But who else? <laughs> I'm just wanting to understand. This is all Fair. like virtual, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's virtual. So he's saying like, "Hey, there's an uh, there's an exact replica of the pink pickle in of the Matrix. The, yeah. And there are actual yeah. bathrooms there, but nobody uses them for anything." I don't want to think about it. So put one in the stall. Pickle. Yeah, yeah. He 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 oh kind of he just he just heaves this sigh and he says, "Is there is there anywhere else possible that you could even think of? There has to be a more secure than well, that it's the place." The Matrix. It'll be fine. Just tell him to put it don't there. Don't worry about it. Do you often go to the Pink Pickle in the Matrix? Hook thinks about it for a moment. <laughs> No, usually I go in real life. Usually. usually. He he just he just turns back and, and and types. I don't think he's even looking at the he's even looking at the screen. And he knows it well enough, and he just types out the pink pickle restrooms in the matrix, and he just sends it. <laughs> Zara pointedly not looking at anyone regarding how often they go to the pink pickle. <laughs> Arrow's just shaking her head now. Um, you, Lucian, get a text back from the rat that just says, okay, um, I will drop it off there later. And if there's nothing else, you all continue to drive to the location that was given for Mikhail's contact. Um, you arrive, um, it's actually like outside of the city proper, um, just kind of on a, uh, off of a highway, you take an exit, um, and you arrive at, like, a shut-down gas station. All right. I think uh, Flick turns over to Mikael and says, This the right place? Um, yes, I believe so. I was told that it was a abandoned gas station, so... All right. Well, off you go. 
Um, do, do you mind if I um, leave my family here while I talk to the contact to ensure that this is the right place? Maybe one of us should go with you. I don't think we should just send you in alone. Okay. I think Fluke is going to like open the back of the van and step out. Anyone else want to come along? Now that they're stopped, I think Lucian is going to open... Uh, I, I like to think he has sort of a divider in the van, because there's the front part with all the seats. It doesn't look like the van. You think it looks like the pizza car. Which I know. You can still feel so, it, though. It's so still he's, tr- he's trying to feel it <laughs> it's out. It's still pizza. He's like, it would be, it would be here. It would be, you know, he's having to feel it out because he can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> but so but he, um, he opens this divider because in the back is like his machine shop where he builds. Yeah. Actually, something I was going to say earlier is like for you inside the pizza van, it's probably like really jarring because. Oh, yeah. There's like people are not like within the bounds of what you believe the vehicle to be, you know? Yeah. Like like your, all of your drones, for bit. example, are in the back machine shop area. And you probably could have seen them if you turned around and they're just like floating outside of the car or like you <laughs> reach for the door handle and there's no door handle there, you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's like, he's, he's basically acting as if he were blind because he's reaching. <laughs> oh, okay. And then he, he, he pulls the divider up and closes it behind him because, um, he's going to step into the machine shop for a moment and do something, which we'll get back to in just a minute. Okay. Okay. I think so. Zara will step out with Fluke because it was her suggestion to not let him go over there alone. So I think Fluke pulls out his gun and, uh, kind of gestures for Mikhail. Go on. And Mikhail starts kind of tentatively walking towards the uh, the front of this place, and uh, the door is just wide open. Uh, he walks in, and you uh, you guys follow him, and you see him just kind of go up to the counter, and there's a little bell there, and he rings the bell. Is there anyone in here? Nope. And he kind of looks at the two of you sheepishly, and he's just like, I was told to ring the bell. And sure enough, you actually see a like uh, a shelf just kind of like a normal like gas station store shelf and like another portion of the space not behind the counter here like move and like move out from the wall and slide to the side and you see kind of a a staircase going down oh no (laughs) that's it (laughs) fluke looks over at zara and says after you (laughs) you can see her kind of walking and she has like her hand on like the holster like on her hip like not drawing her gun but definitely (laughs) ready to go at a moment's notice i think uh luke kind of shuffles mikhail like behind him and walks in after zara with his gun kind of like up in the air ready you guys go down a short flight of stairs into a basement and um you find a just like a little uh like workbench and you see like all around this space you see a bunch of printers and you see like a lot of the equipment that you would need to forge identities, basically. I gotta be honest, my immediate thought was 3D printers and I was like, hey, it looks like my workshop. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I actually thought of 3D printers too. And I was like, that's not what I was saying. Yeah, I know, I gotcha. Um, But I also thought that. And uh, so you kind of look around, you see all of this kind of, uh, these tools and this equipment and you see this guy, uh, this human man just sitting behind that workbench and you see him just kind of like, working on like uh like putting like a photo onto what looks like a driver's license and like laminating it and stuff and um he like looks up to you this guy's got like he's an older man with like just white hair kind of like sticking out all over the place but he's partially bald on the top of his head and he's got like a um oh, hey, like we those... found that guy from back to the future <laughs> yeah he's got those like jeweler's <laughs> glasses if you know what i mean that like zoom in really far yeah, yeah, yeah. and he looks up at you all and he just says uh huh thought there was only supposed to be one of you surprise <laughs> we're just uh just there to make sure everything's all good and then you can you know huh well money's good uh works good we all good here and he's just, just kind of like looking at me kyle and he just kind of shuffles forward and he like reaches into his um into his pocket and he pulls out like a physical cred stick and he hands it over to the guy and the guy kind of like scans it with his comm link and nods and he's just like all right that'll be sufficient so that would be uh four ids yes and uh mikhail just nods and he just says um yes uh for for me and my family do you need uh them here and the man just says um 
yes, yes, I will uh, need new photos and uh, I, I will be able to take care of the rest. And he's just kind of looking around the room, uh, kind of wondering what you two are doing here. Oh, I'll, I'll go get him. And the man just kind of goes back to his uh, his work and he like starts indicating for Mikhail to go stand over in front of like a screen so that he can take a uh, a new photo of him. Uh, Fluke's going to run back upstairs and uh, head back to the van, open it back up. And uh, Arrow we'll get... is outside the van, just like watching and waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Fluke opens up the van and gestures for Mikhail's family says, all right, come on, come on, time to go. And they just kind of like start shuffling and they're just kind of like um, nodding. They're not saying anything because you get the impression they can only speak Russian. All right, come on, couscous, let's move it. <laughs> yeah, the, the the wife gives you kind of a strange look. She probably doesn't know what it means. She's yeah. just like, you're saying my name wrong. Yeah. She looks kind of confused. Yeah. So he, he just starts walking forward. He kind of shuffles the little kids in front of him and the wife and like, go on. Go yeah, they, they they grab all their all their, their, their small amount of possessions and start you know going into the building. Yeah. So he takes them downstairs. Oh, you bring him downstairs and the, the man behind the counter is uh, already like fast, like hard at work on Mikhail's, um, on his new fake ID. And um, he starts kind of shuffling the, the mom and the kids over. And uh, Mikhail, while this is all going on, Mikhail walks up and he's just kind of looking at you and Zara. And he says, well, um, I, I believe this is it. I've, um, I've already gotten a hold of another contact to bring us out of the city. Now that we have these new identities, we will uh, we'll go to another one of the, uh, the countries around here. I think we are done with... Uh, and I, I, Andrew, forgot the name of the country that Seattle is in now, because it's not, We're it's not just the Washington. United States. It's all, <laughs> it's all like so. The West Coast, yeah. to the Northwest, in Shadow Run. Hold on, there's, there's a name for it. There's a name. Oh, like an actual oh, Shadow Run. Apparently, like, it's called uh, Sal. Oh, is that correct? Salishidi. City? What? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Where is it? Is it really that? Is that really the name of the thing? I'm pretty sure that is. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> Gotta run fandom. Seattle itself is in the middle of Salisdi. I, I, this is not pronounced in a way that Salisdi. I can Access to the police and open. Yeah, apparently. I'm sure that's not pronounced the way I think it is. It because I think it's like, like it's two words. The first one yeah, it's, is S A L I S H, and the second one is S H I D H E. Yeah, and there's a dash in the middle. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's where yeah. that's the country. You're, you're tired of SS. <laughs> that works, I guess. Yep. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I've seen like the second half of that word before, I think somewhere, but I don't I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a language I do not know. It is neither English nor German, so I'm lost. <laughs> And neither one of those two languages is helping me pronounce it. <laughs> so, um, so he just says, um, yes, uh, we are, we are done here in Salish. I think maybe we will try the, uh, the California Free State or the Republic of Quebec. And he just nods at you and he just says, um, before you go, I know we've thanked you already, but we, we really cannot ever repay you for what you've done for us. And I just, I want you to have this. And he pulls out another cred stick and hands it to you guys. Oh, money! Apparently, it's Salashi. I found a shadow room cool. tabletop for him. Thank uh, you. Nice. Yeah, Fluke will, Fluke will take that and stick it in a in a pocket. Okay. One of his I'd, many, uh, many pockets. I'd say you know where to find us if you run into trouble, but you probably shouldn't try to find us for a little bit. Please don't try to find us. He hands you a cred stick with 30,000 new yen on it. Can you say that one more time? 30,000 new yen. Oh, that's a lot of new yen. That is a lot that's of That's a lot of money. That's split lot. between than... everybody, thank you. Yeah, it's split between everyone, but yeah. All right. Um, Fluke doesn't know that. It's just a cred stick, so he sticks it in his pocket. So um, at this point, um, Mikhail and his family seem uh, kind of taken up with this, uh, this unnamed contact of his, this... Uh, this man that gives people new identities and helps them escape. So they, uh, they're, he nods. Uh, Mikhail and his family kind of nod at you, and you are free to go. All right, cool. Let's go All back right, up. Yeah. We just head back to Pizza Lisa. 
Uh, they All right. they might actually get some kind of surprise or shock when they open the door. Okay. No. Because um, sitting in the front seat is someone that they might not necessarily recognize anymore. Someone. Oh, well, right, him. Yeah. Well, it's me. <laughs> but <laughs> upon opening the door, Lucian is sitting there, but he looks very different because uh, while they were doing that, he was going through a rather dramatic wardrobe shift. He has other clothes? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Okay. Of course he does. Say it isn't so. He does, but he this this was like this was like in worst case scenario, you know, if I actually have to hide, I will do this. He's got on this like like over large to fit him. He's a full orc like hoodie with a zip up. You know, he's like he's 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 doing the most the most down to earth, downtrod he possibly can. And he's got like these grungy stained sort of like work work pants you know like on a, on a construction site might wear I if they don't re and of course he's still got his principal weapons for like in person he still has his uh, whatever blade I know he's got a blade and then his gun yeah the entire red ensemble and the boots and he might have kept the I don't know if he kept the I don't know if he kept the hat he might have maybe not uh, because surely the, not Okay, yeah, the hat is uh, very... Maybe he put on, like, a baseball cap and he went full on, you know, like, I'm a superhero hiding among regular people look. I mean, he... Yeah, he would have gotten rid of it. So then when they open the door, uh, does anyone have a reaction to this? Because they have never seen him dressed like this. At all. <laughs> Did you get rid of your negative quality that made you dress like that? Did I miss that? Sorry, my video cut out. I actually, yes, I got um, one of oh, okay. the, the, the <laughs> negative was that I had to have something that made me very easily recognizable. And that's what the hat was. Ah, <laughs> I see, I see. So if I have to keep that according to, that's why I'm asking you, Andrew, do I have to keep that to follow my flaw or not? The, I was about to do the whole like push the, the glasses up the bridge of my nose thing. <laughs> Um, so there is a, uh, a drawback to this distinctive style, more so than just the being easier to recognize. It says that you cannot gain or spend edge when you're not rocking your distinctive look. Oh, so he can change. So you, just can't I, you can it. take your, you can take your clothes off and lose your distinctive look, but you're also not going to be able to gain or spend any edge. And that's uh. what you use just in combat. Spent to... my coffee at Andrew telling Wesley he can take his clothes off. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> what has this become? <laughs> Essence sharing? Hey, yeah. You can take your clothes yeah. off. Like, what What are we doing? Oh, okay. boy. <laughs> yeah, the joke's is I think Fluke, like, walks up and, and kind of sees Arrow outside and says, Yep, we're good to go. And then it, like, opens up the door and sees him, like, dressed as, like, a dude and is like, Who are you and what have you done? with our weirdo. Arrow is going to spin and like her hand is going to go to the hilt of her katana and she's going to freeze and like squint. Uh, he just hears this sigh. He's like, <sighs> it's still me. You know, I kind of like you better that way. Oh, believe me. I do as well, but oh, what you do for the job, I suppose. Uh, if I must, I must. <laughs> Zara just kind of squints at him. Feels like he's missing <laughs> something without the hat. Thank you. At least somebody he understands looks this. He does look a little shorter, doesn't he? He he kind of he lifts a hand up to the, and he kind of over the over the head. He's like, yes, I could see why the uh, that would have been a bit different, I suppose. But you can fit into door frames now. That is a positive. Some door frames. Only a temporary measure, thank God. <laughs> like the pizza van. And he looks. Isn't that lovely? He looks around. I love it. Kind of shivers. It's like I'm walking blind in here. It's very strange. You know, the only thing that we're missing is actual pizza. I could really go for some pizza. We do have the van. We could. No, probably not a good idea, is it? We could just sell pizza for a living and stop what we're doing. Nothing bad will happen, right? No. But then I can't nothing. kill my dad, so, you know. <sighs> that does sound better. Maybe we can make him what into a pizza. What if we give him a poisoned pizza? Or may make him into a pizza. I mean, I'm all for that pizza. plan, or either one, actually. Either, either kill him by pizza or. Make him a pizza. I would eat that. <laughs> I would eat that. <laughs> uh, hey, a, I was about to a... say just how off the rails things were going. 
and now we're talking about becoming cannibals via pizza. And I'm I mean, just... hey, he's a he's, he's an, an elf. Orc. He's an orc. It's not technically cannibalism. He's an absolute it's orc. He could still cannibalism. It's still not right. I just don't think you can technically say it's cannibalism. It is Listen. though, because you're all still human. Do I hate oh, on his okay. people? Okay. Well, well then... actually, sorry, I take that back. You are people actually like different, like you know, <laughs> different species, right? Instead of just like Homo sapiens, there are like Homo something. Yeah, yeah, Which, you are I all mean, slightly different. Plus, yeah. I mean, he well, really hates him. They all hate him, so I don't think I don't think anybody else would have great. Uh, well, I don't know. Do they have great reservations? It's eating a person. You're part still eating okay. intelligent no. life. I don't think Fluke likes that. It says, no, I just want to burn him. All that. I mean, that works that, too. That that works too. Yes. All right. I am so a thousand percent on, okay with hold that. Hold on, idea. I need to pump the burn brakes him like here. Like a pizza that got left in the oven. <laughs> Are, are we actually talking no, about the plan? No, we're not actually plan? going to eat him. Okay. No, we're not. It was a joke. <laughs> yes, Andrew, that's I, our I plan, I just want to make sure we're not actually going with the let's go sell pizza for the rest of our oh, lives no, plan. So. No, and, we are uh, not doing, we are not doing <laughs> that, but it was just... <laughs> all the pizza. being sarcastic, guys. <laughs> yes. I mean, Think Andrew actually picked up on that, but I wanted I mean, to be funny. I mean, so. the thing is, I think... <laughs> Everybody except Lucian was being sarcastic. See, but my, I, I don't think my character was being sarcastic. I don't sarcastic. think my character was being sarcastic at all. He was being 100% serious. <laughs> I don't think Lucian's ever been sarcastic. <laughs> oh, I love Snarky, how we, yes. worry, we worried Andrew with that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm so, getting in the van. Cannibalism aside, um, <laughs> we are we are back in the van. You have <laughs> offloaded your convenient NPCs. Um, you you have some extra cash. Oh, the moments that we you are don't going write. back to the city of Seattle. Um, what is everybody doing? What is the plan now? You still have no concrete plan. I think Fluke is going to pull out the cred stick and mention, like, uh, pulls it out and says, holds it like between two fingers or something, and is like. So, Mikhail just gave us a nice little infu infusion of cash. Are you going to smoke that? Give that here. Give it. Give it. No. His hand shoots out. Going to spread it, but I'm just going to hang on to it for now. I was making fun of the way you were carrying it. Yeah, I know. Of I course know. we're going to spread it. I just need to know how much it is. Give it here. Sadly, it's... I already know how much it is. Well, then how, how much, much is it? it? I'm sure he could scan it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's 30,000 new yen. Zara, like, whistles. Not bad. Oof. So what's our plan? We need something concrete to get through this. We're going to get your tigers and then kill your father, and that's pretty much the plan? Yeah, I feel like we're missing a few steps there in between. We're missing many steps. Does anybody have any contacts that might be able to help us out in this situation? She was there when I sent off for mine, right? Yeah. Zara looks over at Fluke and says, Does your dad have, like, any kind of private, uh, medical people in his state or anything like that i would know that right yeah you would know that i'm not gonna you have knowledge kestrel yeah, industries okay. right like your 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 dad is kestrel industries I know, I know. so i'll I'll roll that he says yeah there's like you know if he had something wrong it'd be like a nurse or something come in uh well i just asked because i know a nurse you know because sometimes i need blood so maybe i could reach out to them See if we can figure out who his person is. And then what's the plan? Maybe they can get us in or know how we can get in. Maybe. Or maybe we can use one of the many, you know, extra fun entrances to the manor. Does your father travel a lot? No, no, he does not. But he has private vehicles and private helicopters, apparently. Yep. So what is the chance that we sick the tigers on him for a distraction and we pretend to be his staff and then we take him somewhere where he'll never come back from? See, you know, the problem there is that I'm pretty sure he's not going to leave his house again until we're all dead. What would constitute an emergency for your father that would make him leave the house? Fluke is quiet. <laughs> Running through, like, what would make me leave the house? Oh, maybe Arrow's in trouble. Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe I have another friend in town that's in trouble and then thinks, what would make dad leave the house? And it was like, nothing. Absolutely no human being alive would make him leave the house right now. And he says, I really don't think that's going to work. I think it's better off us getting in the house 
And by house, of course, I do mean enormous mansion. Do we have access to bombs? Sure, we can find somebody that has access to bombs. How many would we need to blow it apart? I do want to mention again, there's a better way to get in here. Also, I don't want to blow my house apart. I have family in there that I don't completely loathe. I guess that's fair. This time. <laughs> this time. <laughs> I think Fluke shoots Arrow like a little annoyed uh, glance. She shoots him back an annoyed glance. <laughs> there's, there's another way in to the house. To tell. That might be easier. And this will be my my. Uh, this is where I'll cut in. So Arrow. So Fluke. I'm just going to roll this into your knowledge because I think this wouldn't have changed. Like some of the location of the house is not changed. No. So you know that the you know structure around it hasn't really changed. You have no clue what he's done to update security on the inside yeah, after you've left. That's the only problem. Um, so you know that your dad lives in a very, very upper class uh, kind of ritzy neighborhood of mansions where it's actually located directly on Lake Washington. And the neighborhood itself is, you know, gated, controlled by kind of just a squad of security officers. You know, your dad probably has his own security. Um, you might need to do some research to kind of maybe learn some more about that now. But as far as the house itself, you know that it is located on the waterfront. So there is a beach access that you could use if you could, like, find a way to sneak that way. Or... There is just the the sewer system that ro- like goes beneath the house. And I I'm willing to bet that like in some of your kind of excursions as a youth, you probably ended up down in there sometimes. So oh, you know that there is a uh, a section of sewer that goes right underneath this neighborhood that you could probably use to get onto the grounds presuming that it's uh you know you get back any there get past any defenses or what have you that are there. But it's a more secluded way there than just driving up on the street. I I actually d- would it make sense for for you if this because I I think like the Kestrel Industries like tower is fairly close. Would it make sense to you if maybe the sewer system went straight from the tower to the the house? I mean, it's going to be connected to the same sewer system, so yeah. I'm just thinking like this may have been like a I don't think it's like a fully functioning sewer system anymore. I think it's like old, mm, you know. Okay. But um, I think this is like how Fluke would like get back and forth, you know, at certain points, like escaping, trying to go back to his, his room, you know, when he was a kid. Yeah, sure. I like that. All you, right. This can be maybe like a subset of the Warrens, you know? I just figured they have better sewer systems than what was probably originally made. Yeah. You know? But what so... was originally made is still there and connects up yeah, to the surface. Still, exactly. So, yeah. Okay. So I think Fluke explains all of this to you guys. Would your dad be expecting us to go through an entrance that you use like that? It's a good question. Potentially, yeah. But it's still probably a better way. So are we all in or do we plan to separate? Well, I think we need to go get our backup first. The tigers. The tigers. My contact might have some useful information regarding the house itself or any security around the area, which... Could prove useful, I don't know. He did fail first time round, but... So we go get the tigers, and then we sneak in through the sewers. With the tigers. With the tigers. If we could get a contact and maybe open up the grate If you would have told me this three days ago, I would have slapped you. Well, you know, I have a lot of reasons for people to slap me. Hear, hear. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that sounds like the plan then is to kind of finish contacting uh, Lucian's contact, see what he's learned, and then go get your backup and then continue to talk to people who might be able to help you and then go from there. Because yeah, we say, have a lot of we have a lot of other um, unused contacts. I was going to say, does anyone have else info. have any other contact yeah. that we could use? Look, I know you said my you had a nurse, contacts but... are a stripper, a nurse, and an arms dealer. So... <laughs> But you've also got the best connection of anybody, so I do have six and six for both for all three. Of my so mechanically, you're the most likely to actually get useful information. I yeah. mean, you. Yeah. I mean, the one contact is a is a strip. So maybe I I don't know if the if dad we could get would... the nurse in there somehow, you know. You think the arms dealer would do business down there? He might. He maybe. might do business with Kestrel. 
I mean, you won't know until you ask. Yeah. I will also remind you that your stripper contact got the same information that Delilah at the Pink Pickle did, which was, I'm mm. pretty sure, the specs to the meat factory that you broke into. Like, it you was. actually yeah. got yeah. building Very plans. Cool. So you never know what she can turn up. What I'm thinking of is that the the sewer is going to be locked from one side. So I'm thinking we need it would be helpful if we had somebody we could get inside to unlock the sewer from the other side, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I have a homeless man and a hairdresser. Doubt those are going to be super helpful. <laughs> I mean, I hey. My only, other, my only other contact is a meat vendor, so. I had mine that I... I, don't, I think I had one contact that I never actually named, but I think Andrew mentioned that mechanically it wouldn't help. Well, I mean, it's not that it wouldn't help. It's just that um, I'm just like, by the numbers, it's unlikely you'll be able to turn up more than other people. Here, so. yeah. I, here's an idea. What if, um, I think maybe the meat vendor is like right outside of the area. You know, this this like food vendor, meat vendor is not the word I was looking for. Food vendor is like right outside of the area. Maybe, maybe Fluke's dad like gets some like, the occasional street food and we can get him to poison it and then we can give him a reason to get the, <laughs> the nurse in there, you know? So we are going to poison his pizza is what you're saying. I don't know. Well, I could have Ellie just idea. go Sweeney maybe Todd. Maybe an overly convoluted idea. I don't know. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I, I, I have contact... to say I didn't I didn't picture your dad as the kind of guy who bought street food. Yeah, I don't think he's so either. Of, That's the problem. He's kind of too stuck up for that. I'm thinking I can contact the arms dealer and ask her if... Um, she does business in that area. And for any information on any activity like guard setting up or like traps that have been set up recently. So we know what to expect after we get through the sewer door. Yeah, that'd be useful. Then I will reach out to my contact, Joni. So tell me about Joni. Uh, <laughs> so I know who I'm role playing, basically. Joni is a human woman <laughs> <laughs> descriptive that's that's yes, great yep. i didn't really think about it too much i'm kind of thinking oh gosh i can't remember her name from the atlantis movie the blonde lady oh that's... okay uh, yeah helga helga right oh, the one who yes. looks like angelina jolie yes that's what i'm thinking uh, we'll just say it's blonde <laughs> angelina jolie oh my god <laughs> that's who i picture every time i see that movie I mean, she's pretty, but she's tough. <laughs> and she's a really good arms dealer. Like, she gets what you need when you need it. You know, like, as long as it's at the right price, though. You know, like, she's not going to take crap for or anything lower than what she deserves, you know? <laughs> okay. So how are you reaching out to her? Uh, I don't want to, like call because i feel like that's probably something that can be tracked um you could send fluke <laughs> maybe i'll just send her like a message first that says something like i have someone that needs to talk to you through the matrix or something like that like would that be how i would set that up for fluke to talk to her yeah you could definitely do that okay and fluke has yeah, the, that's the career sprite he can send like a message with the career sprite and send it back okay um, yeah, then she would just reach out to Joni and say, like, hey, I have someone that needs to talk to you through the Matrix. She just texts back, um, give me a uh, place and a time and I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> she looks over at Fluke, where you want to meet her. Fluke gets a smile on his face. Oh, don't, oh, boy. Oh, Fluke, really? I think maybe we should uh, spread out a little bit and not use the same location twice. Um... Sure. Let's meet at the McHardy's down the street. <laughs> <laughs> also, we've decided brothel. that this girl looks like Yelena Belova. Be Belo I think that's how you pronounce her. Uh, we think we think she looks like Black Widow's little sister. <laughs> very much. I like very it. Very much. That's good. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's meet at the McHardy's. I'm not doing another Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> she just looks like her. Um. So yeah. Uh. Zara will pass us information on the Joni. Okay. Well, it sounds like we've got two contacts to get information from that are both meeting or dropping off things to Fluke in the Matrix. True. Honestly, at this stage, I don't think that it, it's really going to make much of a difference to have you roll for this kind of stuff. You guys are just in the planning phase. You have already succeeded a lot on hiding yourselves. So I'm just going to kind of hand wave you guys trying to like avoid detection at this point until you get to the... Uh, 
not the heist, but you know what I mean. The fun part. Yeah, the fun part. So you can very easily get to these two locations. Uh, which would you like to go to first? I think we know Fluke wants to go to the Pink Pickle first. I think we <laughs> haven't heard. I think we haven't heard back from from Wesley's contact yet. So he he may I mean, still be it's, waiting on him to get information he could drop off to it's me. It's been like two hours, so I think he's actually ready. I think he's. We'll say that he sent you a text, Lucian, saying that. Okay. He then is prepared to drop. Luke can go to the pink pickle first, grab the thing, and then meet the the girl at the the McCarty's. Yeah, I, I th- he gets this he gets this ping and he he reads, and he turns turns to Fluke. He's like, "Hey, uh, distillery. It looks like um looks like my uh my mole has something." Did you just call him a distillery? <laughs> yeah, he just called Fluke a distillery. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 apt. So yeah, all right. And Fluke says. All right, so I'm just going to hang out here in this parking lot while I go talk to people. Um, well, really quick. Um, well, sorry, wait, have you gone already? I might have. I was oh, it's a, it's a, this is what Fluke was asking. It's like, should we just like hang out nah. here in the parking lot or should we maybe move? Like keep moving? We can do a drive about while you go through this. It might look suspicious. If um, we... As a fan of your characters, I'll remind you that you guys had already planned to like go drive to the uh, location of the two Project Alphas next. Yeah, we can so go there next. You'd probably just be on the way. Just drive on the way. Yeah, exactly. right, yeah that works. Yeah. Uh, Arrow is just keeping in tune with like the frequencies of law enforcement while Fluke does his thingy. I'm, I'm just going to kind of hand wave it again too and not make you roll because you've already succeeded. So you're getting kind of similar to what Fluke had earlier. You're listening in on these radio frequencies without any extra equipment and you are hearing no chatter on the location of your group. Hashtag pizza you, van. You do hear... <laughs> you're welcome. You're you welcome. do hear one group of uh, cops kind of positing the idea of, you know, maybe we should go check the Warrens out. But that's just kind of them guessing on where you could have gone. Okay. So well, we're not there anymore. So okay, cool. So yeah, Fluke. Uh, while while they're driving, you go to the Pink Pickle. Uh, honestly, you, uh, you while you're there, just you know, you you would notice this. You actually see um, you see Delilah's avatar there. Oh, is she in the Matrix for a little while. Yeah, she. Uh, you do know that she sometimes goes and um, does shows, so to speak. Uh, Online, <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah, I think Fluke's probably not gonna bother her. You're right not gonna now. bother her, okay? Well, he doesn't look like himself either, right? He doesn't look. No, he is a pizza. Yeah, I think Fluke's probably not gonna bother her too much right now. I think he's just gonna. He's. I don't even know if he'd go there directly. I think he might just send his courier to go pick up the thing. Oh, okay. And then like go directly to the McCarty's. Okay. So then maybe you don't notice her there but that's fair yeah so Um, i send my i send owl to go pick it up yeah so owl uh your sprite goes and picks up the drop in the toilet of the um digital version of the pink pickle yep and you go to this uh mccarty's and you meet in the parking lot with this uh kind of this avatar version of uh what was the name again joni j-o-n-i joni you would have been told ahead of time like what to look for as far as the avatar and you see just kind of a nondescript human it's actually just like a dude in like a trench coat okay um so you can tell she's trying to just like not look like herself yeah yeah i think fluke will as he walks into the mccarty's i think fluke will change out of his pizza and look not like himself um but like I think he looks like a generic person. Like, he's just like a tall guy. John Doe. John Doe, <laughs> yeah. He tries to, he tries to like, change his look to look as nondescript as humanly possible. Well, all you gotta do is wear glasses. Nobody can, nobody will recognize you when you wear glasses. <laughs> um, so yeah, he just looks, he looks, because everyone's kind of dressed crazy, you know, like in the Matrix, because you can mm-hmm, dress however you, you want. So he looks want, like yeah. kind of wild. But normal. He fits normal in. for the Matrix, yeah. Yeah, normal yeah. for the Matrix. But he doesn't look like himself. You're um you're just like uh you know, insert this cartoon character and insert this outfit. Yes. So what, what are you going with? <laughs> oh gosh, he's gotta prompt. he's gotta look like Johnny Bravo. Okay. <laughs> in what costume? Uh, um, yes. In like a in like a suit. But like a like a, a like a, a sparkly suit. Not too noticeable, a sparkly, but sparkly okay. Okay. Yeah, he's got like a chrome suit. I on. was about to make a joke about Bjorn again, but nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. 
Just because he and Johnny Bravo are both blonde. And they yeah, he looks, like a per- he looks like a, a real life version of Johnny Bravo. Okay. With all the hair like sticking up and everything. That's Interesting. Kind of terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So you see your contact, uh, Joni. Um, you see her avatar go up to the counter and order a meal and go sit down in a booth. Uh, he'll just go sit down at the booth. Okay. And um, obviously, like, this isn't them physically getting the order right now. that They've ordered it, and it's being delivered to them at home. Yeah, yeah. But, I uh, gotcha. You know, she's pretending to, to sit down in this digital version of the restaurant. And you sit there, and she just kind of nods at you, and she just says, um, in, a, in a man's voice, because it's the Matrix, she just says, um, you're here for the information for uh, our mutual friend? Yep. How, uh, how would you prefer this? you want me to tell you, or would you like... Uh, and she kind of just like looks around the room. Would you like me to just hand off a file? I think uh, Fluke will like manifest his little courier sprite owl, which looks like a, like an email symbol, like a little, like a mail symbol. Okay. And he like opens up the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the contact kind of just takes up, uh, just pulls like a letter out of their pocket, like a kind of a shining like icon of a letter and just like, Drops it in the envelope. Excellent. And nods at you and just says, um, I owed Zara a favor, so uh, tell her that I consider us to be even. All right. And I think Fluke will come out of the Matrix. Okay. Do I need a roll for that, or do you roll my contact You guys thing? are going to. Actually, we're going to kind of snap back to the van. Fluke returns with two pieces of information. And I'm going to have you and Lucian roll to see how good that information is next time. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no. Oh. 